learn how to create, sustain, and scale up your print-on-demand business with the latest tips, guides, and strategies to help you start selling and making money today. Welcome to the Sales on Demand Show, and here's your host, Adam Schneider. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Sales on Demand Show. My name is Adam, and I'm your host. This is episode 76. And today we are talking about what is your entrepreneurial type. Uh, so just to recap of some of the last few episodes I've been talking about, we uh, talked about how the pandemic is creating inflation that's going to impact you know, your savings, if you have any, which you should, um, and a few things that you can do to protect yourself from the upcoming unrest upcoming unrest. What am I saying? The current unrest. Oh, I mean, if you haven't already noticed, um, anybody living in a city uh, who owns a home or a business, you're literally risking everything living in a city. And I said this a couple weeks ago, and this is, I mean, if this isn't obvious to you already, you should look at getting yourself out of big cities. Um, And the great thing about running an online business is that you can do that. You do not have to live anywhere. Um, Sure, there are some countries where it's harder to sell than others, where, you know, Amazon might not approve uh, you to sell on Amazon if you live in, you know, um, you know, someplace in Africa that's got a lot of corruption. But other than that, um, you can literally run a business from anywhere on planet Earth. You do not have to live in the city. This is easy to do from small towns, and it's cheaper. And, you know, nobody's going to come and burn your house down or anything like that or burn your business down. So, um, for me, uh, it's pretty quiet right now. It is um, back to school season, and there's a noticeable drop in sales traffic. So, whereas for most of the summer I was seeing, you know, pretty, pretty decent sales almost all the way through summer especially when I started selling masks. This is the back-to-school time, and uh, if you aren't already selling back-to-school mugs and stuff like that, you should look into doing that. Uh, They will sell all the way through September, believe it or not. I mean, back-to-school kind of is a a, a month long, and people are buying gifts for teachers, and they should be, you know, themed for the year 2020. Uh, I'm just also enjoying some cooler weather, and I'm trying to stay off Facebook and Twitter because it is driving me crazy just seeing everything that's happening right now. Uh, I just can't handle it. It's so distracting. So uh, if you're finding yourself just reading all of these things coming out in the news, I mean, why? Uh, I Asking myself the same question, why are we paying attention to this stuff? We literally have no control over any of this. So... It is far easier to change your life when you focus on on what you can change. Um, You just can't change the world. You're not going to be able to change the world. You can't change what's happening in the United States or in your home um, country. It's hard to change what's happening even in your hometown, Um, although you have more control over that. What you really have control over is your life and... um, that's about it. Your your uh, actions, your emotions, how you look at the world, the things that you know, the things that you do, you have control over that. So, um, you know, just stay off Facebook, avoid the news. There's just nothing good there. All right, so let's move to what is selling. So it is coming up on September. Now, September is not the start of quarter four because quarter four is the last three months of the year. But it is time to start thinking about quarter four because the time flies. From here to December, you might think, oh, I've got lots of time, but you actually don't have a lot of time. So now is the time to start taking action. Get those five listings up every single day or maybe every single weekday. Um, I'm managing to get that many listings up and then more, but 
I'm actually planning to hire somebody to help me with my Etsy, and I'm going to be hiring somebody local, hopefully a family member, but if not, then somebody that I know. And actually, we'll talk about that a little bit today and how hiring somebody takes you to the next level. Don't forget, you can get a free video and weekly tips when you join the email list plus information that is not included in the weekly podcast. You can find that at salesondemandshow.com slash start, S-T-A-R-T. It was strange. I uh, sent that link to somebody and they came back and said, oh, your website's down. And sure enough, the website was down. So if you noticed this week that the uh, Sales on Demand Show website was mysteriously out of commission, uh, I have fixed that, although I don't know what exactly happened. Uh, so hopefully uh, Bluehost, which is my hosting service, is not... I'm going to be experiencing these, you know, strange problems. But uh, in any case, we're back. Um, so, course update. Um, I am picking the launch date of the 8th of September. And I'm already loading videos and creating um, a lot of step-by-step step instruction guides here. So let me just give you, let me just give you a rundown on what's going to be included in this course in terms of, like, documents. So... Of course, I'm going to have the step-by-step basic instruction guide, customer service scripts that you can copy and paste and give to your own customers, a list of print-on-demand suppliers, um, very detailed instructions on opening an Amazon account, um, detailed idea list to help you come up with new ideas, uh, a guide to getting started on Etsy, common problems that you'll encounter and what to do, things that are important versus not important, finding a supplier for FBA, hiring a virtual assistant checklist, and more. So that is just a few of the topics that are going to be covered. Those are the documents that I've created. And then there's going to be another probably 20 or more videos. And on top of that, there's going to be a Facebook group that is exclusively for people who join the course and will be... Basically, anything that comes out that's new, that I find out, that's where it's going to be posted first. Uh, You can ask questions. You can give support to other sellers. Uh, It's just a mastermind group for people. So that's what's coming up on the 8th of September. Watch out for that. Um, Well, let's get into the meat of this. So I came up with this idea after having um, done a test called the Enneagram. Uh, The Enneagram is, I I don't even know what the word means, but it's basically like a personality type test. Um, But instead of the, you know, the four different types of personality, this one has nine. Um, And I hadn't, I'd never heard of this before, but uh, we're doing a series on it at my church. And it was fascinating to be perfectly honest. Like, um, Take this test, and I'll put a link to in the show notes if you want to take the test for yourself. I do actually highly recommend that you take the test because it is really useful to know what kind of personality you have. Um, many people, including myself, you know, we go through life and we just sort of instinctively know that we are a certain way, but we can't really articulate. People ask you, well, are you an extrovert? And you're like, well, kind of, but not really. You know, I like being alone, but I'm comfortable around people. And it's it's difficult to really know what you want to do with your life without knowing kind of who you are and what motivates you. So this this Enneagram thing is more like the things that motivate you and the sort of uh, tendencies that you have. So there's nine of these, and I'll just sort of list them really quick here. So there's... Number one is the reformer, you know, someone who's rational, idealistic, principled, self-controlled, and perfectionistic. Um, Man, yeah, that describes me to a a T. Now, this is not my strongest um, type. And when you take the test, you'll see that you become, like, you. they give you basically three three main types. And I'm going to break this down much simpler than this. But um, number two is the helper. So you're caring, you're more interpersonal, generous, people-pleasing. 
So three is the achiever, success-oriented, pragmatic, um, good at adapting, and driven, but image conscious. Number four, the individualist, kind of sensitive, withdrawn, but also expressive and self-absorbed and maybe a little temperamental. Number five is the investigator. So this person is very intense and cerebral, um, probably doesn't have a very strong sense of humor, but they are perceptive, innovative, um, but they can be isolated. So number six, loyalist, committed, but security-oriented person, um, responsible, but sometimes anxious and suspicious. So um, number seven, uh, busy, fun-loving, the enthusiast. So very spontaneous, versatile, but easily distracted and scattered. So um, hmm, some of those describe me a little bit. Um, number eight is my strongest uh, type, and this is the challenger. It's a powerful, dominating type. Um, Self-confident, decisive, but willful and confrontational. So, oh yeah. Um, and number nine is the peacemaker. Easygoing, self-effacing, but is also receptive, reassuring, and sometimes complacent. So, um, highly recommend you go take that test and just get an idea of you know what motivates you. Um, that'll be the last I mention of those Enneagram types. So when I talk about what kind of entrepreneur are you, um, I'm going to use two different metrics here. So first of all, your risk level, you know, how much risk are you willing to take and your experience level. So I'm going to give you some advice based on low, medium, and high level of risk taking and low, medium, and high level of experience. So you might fall into a low risk level, but you might have lots of experience. So you you could see some crossover there. You might be medium risk, but low experience. Um, so that will affect how you should, you know, sort of deal with your business. Okay, so first, um, risk level. How much risk are you willing to take in your business? And generally speaking, this is talking about financial risk, but also time risk. Um, there is a lot of people who don't have a lot of time, and they're kind of impatient. Um, so uh, that can factor into this as well. So if you have a low risk tolerance, then you should be only on Etsy. You should only be selling mugs. And you should keep your processing times quite long and turn off your ads. Because, you know, for a person who has a low risk tolerance, you're looking to save money. You know, you're not willing to spend money on ads. You're not willing to risk um, selling products that, you know, might take longer to process. So you're not going to want to sell t-shirts right now. T-shirts have long processing times. Mugs, however are very quick to print and ship. So selling mugs is going to be great. And you can actually make a very, very good, you know, living selling mugs uh, on Etsy. And there are people who just only sell coffee mugs. And they they have basically avoided masks, tumblers, t-shirts, because there is a learning curve with all of that. And there's a little bit more risk when you add products that have different processing times. And so there are people who just don't want to risk that. Um, people with low risk tolerance are probably not going to sign up for the integrations because it adds, um, you know, a cost to their to their business, and they don't want that cost. So I actually know somebody who has a low risk tolerance, but is making a lot of money and does not use. Um, as far as I know, they don't use any integrations, or at least they don't exclusively use integrations. Um, now this this lady uh, is make like I said she is making a lot of money. She's doing it full time, so she has high experience. So she's low risk, high experience. So medium risk people um, should be selling on both Etsy and Amazon, right? Amazon is more more of a risky platform because it can take quite a while 
to gain traction on Amazon. Typically, people have, you know, 300 plus listings on Amazon before they start seeing really any sales at all. And it does take time to build that up. So if you're paying $40 a month for months before you see any sales, that's a risk. And if you don't have a lot of time, then it could take longer before you see a lot of sales. And so it is a little bit of a medium risk. So a medium risk tolerance is going to do minimal fulfillment by Amazon for clear winners only. So if you don't know what that means, you know, when you see a winner on Amazon that's starting to sell, um, you print out those products and have them sent to Amazon and Amazon will sell and ship them for you. Um, that's called FBA, Fulfillment by Amazon. If you don't know what that is, go look through the... the um, podcast history you'll see lots and lots and lots of podcasts all about fba i won't get too dip deep into that now but minimal fba for clear winners only um some advertising on the platforms and carefully selling some of the more risky products so i fall you know me i'm more of like a medium risk person um i didn't start selling masks until i was 100 percent sure that the shipping was good and that the quality was high Um, because I just don't want to deal with the the customer complaints that come with uh, selling um, masks if they're not going to be arriving in time and you know just I just didn't want to deal with that so I I do fall between medium and high for risk um, in that I have spent a lot of money on training which is a high risk thing Um, but I've stopped doing that now, so I'm kind of falling in between there. So a high, a person with a high risk tolerance will sell anything, but usually, you know, and when customers complain, they'll deal with the complaints. They don't mind dealing with complaints, but their goal is to make as much money right now as possible. They're trying to scale their business fast. So you know, that income, that immediate income is kind of a priority. They're willing to sit down and spend, you know, 10, 12 hours a day on the computer. And they're just really driven that way. But they have some cash set aside. So they have no issue spending, you know, $1,000 on extra training. You know, they'll hire virtual assistants right away. They might have several virtual assistants right away. Usually a person that has a high risk tolerance is somebody who has done some kind of prior business before and understands that you know this is a profitable venture that you can scale very quickly if you do you know these things up front like hiring a virtual assistant and getting more training and then sending more fulfilled by amazon stock um you know they're uh they're just you know they're not afraid of losing a little bit of money if it means that they could potentially make quite a bit of money doing something. So that's risks level. Uh, So now let's go into experience level. So if you have low experience, and and I'm going to give you some ideas of what you should be aiming for, what your expectations are for, um, for this business should depend on your experience level, right? So when I first started doing this, I had some very high expectations and those expectations were not met when I first started doing this business but also I was very inexperienced and my business could not grow until I had gained some experience and uh, gotten past some you know some shortfalls in myself and some shortfalls in my you know my personal finances Um, so I grew as much as I could you know and as fast as I could. All right, so a person with low experience, you're just getting started, right? You're just, you know, maybe you just opened up an Etsy account. You should aim to reach 100 sales on any platform and not worry about profit yet. So I have had, you know, a lot of people who reveal that they got into this business because you know, they lost their job or something and they're like, I need, I need this money right now. 
So I'm going to tell you that that's not a good position to be in to be running a business. You should have, um, in the first year, you should not be taking any of your profits. Um, and that's because you're going to reinvest your profits into either more training or just re- directly into your business. Either, you know, um, save the money, save it up. Um, especially at Christmas time, you're going to need that cash flow to send out orders especially for Amazon, because Amazon doesn't pay you for like three weeks. So if you make a sale on Amazon, you got to pay to send that product to the customer. But Amazon's not going to give you the money for three weeks. So you need to have some cash saved up. So if you are um, in that category where you, you're like, I need this money, um, and you're in your first year, then you need to, to find some other source of income that is secure you know, maybe it's not a lot of money, but you need something because um, you're just not going to be able to scale this that quickly if you need to take your profits. So, you know, get started. Aim to reach that 100 sales on any platform and don't worry about profit because really you're not going to be profitable right off the bat. You're going to be spending money. Um, you know, if you have Amazon, you're going to be spending the money on the $40, $40 a month. Um, you're going to have Etsy listings that don't sell and you're going to be paying that 20 cents. Um, maybe you're spending money on some training and that's going to take away from your profits, but that is where you, that's your expectations for the year. And you should adjust those expectations to match what you're probably going to see. All right. So let's talk about medium level experienced sellers. So this was basically me up until like you know, last year, last Christmas, um, you're more than a year in and you should be aiming for, you know, a thousand to 2000 total sales or yearly sales and a growth of about 30% year over year, at least 30%. This is where you're going to be up until you're getting about a hundred thousand dollars in sales a year. Once you get to a hundred thousand in sales a year, You become sort of a high experienced person and you're going to find that you're going to need to do things that a low experienced person or someone with like medium level experience doesn't have to do. You know, the first two experience levels, you don't need a virtual assistant, Um, especially if you have low risk tolerance. You can do all of this by yourself. And I mean, this is what I've been doing up until now on the side. Like I have not been spending a ton of time building my business, especially in the last couple of years here. Um, and that's just where I'm at. Now, once you reach $100,000 in sales per year, you're going to run into a problem. You're not going to have enough time to really manage this business, especially when it's really busy at Christmas time. Um, but if you're working a full-time job, you know, you're not going to be able to quit that job to go full time because a hundred thousand in sales at 30% profit, that's what $30,000 a year. I mean, that's just not, that's not really enough to live on. Um, personally, I, um, you know, I would be happy with 300,000 in sales, 30% profit. That to me is like full time level. Um, so getting from medium to high experience it does take some risk and you're going to have to just jump. Um, So once you reach that high level of experience, now it's time to hire a virtual assistant and you should be thinking about managing your time and delegating tasks that you either don't like doing or the things that you are worst at. So this is how you scale your business quickly. Okay. Once you reach a hundred thousand dollars in sales a year, you know what you're doing. You know how to create designs. You know what's selling. So you just need to scale that up by a factor of three. Okay, so you need to hire a virtual assistant of some kind. Maybe it's a not virtual assistant. Maybe it's just someone in your house that's going to go and, you know, launch those Etsy listings. But you should be starting to think about a workflow, meaning that you're creating between five to ten new listings every single day that are targeted. And you're, you're consistent with that. You're managing your time. And again, delegating those tasks 
that you're worst at. For me, I I do not like launching listings on Etsy. I I just don't like doing it. So that's what I'm going to be paying someone to do, and I'll probably pay them like you know a dollar fifty or two dollars per listing just because I hate it that much. The things that I do enjoy are actually creating the designs. And I, like I've said before, I have like a a folder full of designs that I have not actually launched yet because I just do not enjoy going through and clicking all the things and launching the listing. Um, So that's that's my drawback, and I'm going to be hiring somebody to deal with that for me. And they're going to take that awful task that I hate doing and leave me with my time free to do the things that I'm good at and that I like to do. So that's really the meat and potatoes of this podcast episode, guys. I mean, I really feel like there's quite a bit of value in knowing, you know, what kind of a person you are. And uh, I mean, if you, if right now you're like, I'm low risk, but I'm working my way towards being medium risk, then you know where you're at, right? And you can slowly make those steps. You don't have to rush this. There's no reason to rush out there and do all of this stuff right away. This is something that that you build up year over year. Now for me, I kind of started at a high risk and I'm slowly sort of pulling myself back a little bit. Um, Only risking money on the things that I know are going to pay off. Um, So, I mean, I've spent, I've probably blown like $10,000 on things that I got almost no benefit out of. But, you know, that's just part of gaining experience, right? And uh, this year is going to be huge for me, of course. And hopefully it's going to be huge for you as well. All right, that's that's it, everybody. We'll uh, talk to you next week. I've got a pretty uh, interesting... I'm going to be talking next week about um, creating an action plan. And I'm going to be taking this, you know, low, medium, and and you know, very experienced thing, and I'm going to be creating some action plans for you that you can follow, regardless of what your experience level is. You'll have an action plan that um, that you can follow. I'll even have a free download for you. Uh, but you're going to have to join my email list. So uh, click on that, salesonthebandshow.com slash start. We'll see you next week. Cheers.